Now I have somehow lost my presentation on this. Sorry, bear with me. Thank you. All right, so this meeting is being recorded. There are live captions. Um, participants will be muted during the main presentation. I guess I'm supposed to do that. I'll do that after this intro. Um, uh, when unmuted, be mindful of background noise. Uh, virtual backgrounds are okay, but we ask that you not have any with movement as that uh, can cause uh, vertigo in, in, in people's in conditions. Uh, please be nice and be respectful. Please abide by our code of conduct uh, to get support or report an incident uh, during or, uh, or around the event. Contact community volunteer organizers at info um, at info at badcamp.org. Um, it is our code is based on the bad camp uh, code of conduct. And Drupal events that are coming up. Uh, Drupal Camp Asheville, July 8th to 9th. That will be all virtual. Uh, we have a few couple of days, July 14th through 15th, also virtual. Drupal Camp Colorado, August 6th to 8th, virtual. Uh, Drupal DNI Camp, uh, Diversity Inclusion Camp, August 13th to 14th. Uh, that's also virtual. And Drupal Camp New York City, October 28th to 30th, which is hybrid, which is exciting to see. There we go. Uh, the diversity inclusion camp, um, the call for papers are still open through July 23rd. And the ally talks, accessibility talks, um, schedule varies, but I guess it sounds like they're kind of always looking for papers. So um, call for speakers. Uh, we're always looking for people to speak at an upcoming SF Dog. Um, you know, people of all levels of expertise and really any topic, even if just tangentially related to Drupal is welcome. Um, do contact us at sfdrupalusers at gmail.com if you're interested. Oops. Black Lives Matter. Drupal jobs. Um, is anybody here? Oops, there's supposed to be another slide there. Okay. Well, is anybody here either looking for a job or looking to hire? Uh, like to uh, speak up and announce your services and or open position. Now's the time to do that. Um, let's see, there's also, um, we, there are still jobs on the bad camp, the 2020 bad camp uh, job board. Um, and you can also go to jobs.drupal.org. Also just kind of a, a selfish plug, Canopy, we're hiring. Um, you can check us out at canopy.com. Uh, we're looking for Drupal people, but also WordPress people and uh, not just developers. Uh, so uh, give us a look, it's a great place to work. Um, so what we're doing still, we're still in the mode of um, doing two a month, oops. Uh, we do two a month, uh, one on the second Thursday. We do that at 5.30 Pacific time. And then we do the fourth Thursdays of the month. Uh, we do those a little earlier at 3.30. These are some of our upcoming um, presentations we're excited about. Uh, we're gonna have Understanding React JS. Oh, the dates are down at the bottom. I'm like, where's the date? Um, yeah, so that'll be on July 22nd uh, at a 3.31. There we go. Um, August 12th, uh, we're gonna be learning about Drupal development workflow on AWS with Salim Lakani. That should be good. That's gonna be a 5.31. Um, we have Robustness and Chaos, the Evolution of Triple Seemingly Simplistic Primary Menu with Mike Herschel from Wollobot. That should be good. That's September 9th at 5.30. OK, 
Okay, and um, I think I was supposed to, I thought there was supposed to be a slide that said, uh, well, in July, we're just having, I guess it's implied that we're just gonna have, even though we are normally doing two a month, in July, we're just doing one. Um, uh, so, okay. okay, so now uh, without further ado, I'll introduce, um, uh, I'm sorry, Simon Mora. Uh, tech lead at Rootstack is going to talk to us about concurrent queue workers for Drupal. Uh, we're super excited to have you, Simon. Um, thank you. And uh, before I turn it over to you, thank you, the presenter. I uh, just wanted to say a special thank you to Canopy Studios for providing the Zoom room and the transcriptions for tonight's meetup. Okay. So are you ready, Simon? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let me. Stop sharing. Okay, the moment, so it's asking for permission. Okay, you can see my screen? Yes. Thank you. Okay, your side. So today I'm going to talk about concurrent queue worker for Drupal. I'm Simon Mora. Uh, I'm a full stack developer and tech leader at Rootstack. Um, so this is what I'm going to talk about today. And I will explain a little bit about Drupal queue and create PHP, and then I'm going to talk about what is this Q concurrency that I have been working on, and the why I will chose, then I will show the code for the concurrent workers. Um, also, we'll show an example, and compare the performance between the default Q processor and the, and the concurrent worker. I, I'm also going to talk about the alternatives and, and why I did choose this one. So to queue operations and the Drupal core has a capability for queues. So you can create a queue, you can add items to the queue you can claim items from the queue and you can release items from the queue. So it is helpful to, when you have to work with several items in the future, uh, you can also process the queue on, the, on using a command with Rush or using the command job. React PHP. So React PHP is a library that is not exactly for configuring workers or things like that. And React PHP provides a uh, even look allows to work with PHP like it was no DS or something like that. It also it also provides uh, a server. You can create a server instance, a socket server instance. You can create web sockets with React PHP. You can also connect to regular sockets or web sockets using React PHP. Why did I use this library? It is because it doesn't require uh, extension or something like that, or you don't have to enable some flag while you compile PHP. This work on most environments. And so it also works on Akia and Pantheon. So thank you, concurrency. So we are seeing React PHP to connect between a server and several several worker process. So the thing the and we have to talk about why the problem we had. Um, then why did we came to this solution? And this problem, uh, the way is performance. We didn't need some performance. The client was having several issues with the regular queue on Nakia. 
So I will explain a little bit more about this client. This client has a Drupal 8 site. This site is about tools. So the client has an integration with an external ser service and also to Salesforce. So they sync the tools. They sync pricing, availability, and destination and everything. So the problem was they had a, a scheduled job on Akia. But by the time the, the queue did finish, by the time we the thing did finish, the items data was not up to date anymore. And we had a ticket open about that and from the client. The client told us that this thing isn't working. There is an issue. We did verify the thing and it was working properly. But a single sync process was like one or two or something. So that did, didn't work for the client. We did try to refactor and but the estimate was several days for the client and, and the client did need a fix for on the same week. So we also, we also had a legacy code um, for the sync. Uh, it will take several days to refactor that. So there is some benefits on this implementation is that we can have several workers processing the queue. We can have like eight workers at, at the same time working on the queue items. We have a reduced time when we have to work with the database or we have to query an external resource using HTTP request or also SOAP request. And the proper usage of available resource. And we did monitor the process on Akia. The process CPU usage was at 1% or 2% something. And so the process was mostly waiting for the external service response. So we have this over here. So I'm going to show the code. Um, I also have an example and we're going to test that. Let me know if the font size is working for you. Okay. So I, we had uh, this code in the project in my custom module. I did clean up the code for this presentation. Also after this presentation, I will create a sandbox and I still have to clean up something to push to the Drupal or community. So this is mostly two files. We have a server file and we have a client file. So this is the server the, that start with a Drush command. And so this file, what happens when I run this command is that it verifies that it verifies that we have a queue and the queue has items. After that, it will start the socket server. Right here, we have to create a ML loop instance, then we have to create a socket server. Then we have to bind the connections. Um, we listen. This is to listen to the client response. The, this allows two-way communication. We receive a message that the worker is ready for new items. We send the items and we get a response back. A response back like we have like success, then we release the item from the queue, or we can have a memory issue message. We have this on Akia. Three on the legacy code we had memory leaks. So the process, each worker process has a memory limit. When the worker is about to reach this limit, it will send a message to the server. So the server knows that it has to spend to spawn a new process and it will close the connection for the process that has the memory leak issue and will continue. So 
then we have to bind the timers. We have two timers. Uh, we did use this timer to start the child process after the event loop happens and after we start the loop. And then we also have this timer that verify is half second that if we did finish and, or we don't have any workers waiting for new items to stop. This will trigger the shutdown and we'll exit the loss. So this is the client on, on, the, on the right window. So it is simple and you, what I like about this implementation is that you can work with existing code and it's something easy you can implement in like three hours or something. So it is easy to work with, with this library. You don't have to update your queue. You don't have to update your service or anything like that. Everything works properly out, out of the box. You only have to write the server and the client to get this working. So on the client, the client will connect to the server and then it will notify the server that it is ready and waiting for the items. After it get after it receives the item, it will create a worker instance. I did copy this from the Drupal core queue. This queue worker manager and will create a new instance of the queue processor, which is wait a moment. This one. So for this presentation, I wrote a, an example that will add some items to the queue. We, each item will fetch a character from an API and create a new node on Drupal. Okay, so this is the worker and I still have to fix and clean up some issues. Uh, so this is the reason that we don't still have a project on Drupal. Or, but I still have to add if we had an exception or something and don't release the item to try again and things like that. So, after we did process the item, we will notify the server that we did finish the item with that ID. And then we'll verify on the next tick if we are still under the memory limit. If we did reach the memory limit, we'll notify the server that we should kill this process. If not, we'll request a new item to the server. So what I'm going to do now is to fill the queue um compare compare and get the queue working with the original command and get the queue working with the concurrent command okay this is um a drupal default installation i did only create a new content type and the content type is character only have uh, three fields or something and this is the queue. We don't have any items. I will fill the queue with some items. And this will consult uh, the Swapy, which is a Star Wars API for testing. So I did queue the the characters for the field one are two and two of a star, a star Wars. And then I going to verify that we have we have those items on the queue. And we run the queue using the standard command, which is drosh queue room and the queue name.
we have to wait. Okay, so the default Q processor um, takes uh, 13 seconds. I'm going to verify that we have the items on the content. Great. Okay, so I'm going to delete those items. And then I will run the queue with the concurrent. So I have to print the queue again. So we have the same account, uh, same count of items. I'm going to enable the verbose so, so we have the debug from debug out debug output. Also, I'm going to show the process list. So I start the server, I start the workers, and each worker will attempt to fetch an item and process the items. So we did go from 30. Uh, 13 seconds to four seconds. Also, if we scale like 2,000 items, it, we will have a large difference on time. So what I'm going to do now is to go step by step on the code. Uh, in the book. I will add a breakpoint on the client and Simon, uh, one question. Uh, can can you define how many concurrent workers will yeah, be that, running? That, yeah, that is an option uh, on the command. So there is a default property. For the max workers, and you can also specify the workers using the option at the command. Okay. I'm going. I want to debug. I only going to use a single worker. So I will print the queue again. Let me add a breakpoint on the command. And from the queue. Okay, so we're going to we're going step by step, and it will verify if we have the option set, and we'll verify the queue. If the queue has item, it will continue, and then we have to create the event loop. Then we have to create a new server, which is a default socket server. You can connect to the server using internet, for example, from your, your command line. And then we find the connection. I'm going to add a breakpoint here. Then the timers, and when we hit wrong, it will. Uh, attempt to create a new worker. So to create a new worker, it used shell exec, which seemed to work properly on Akia. And it only you it used Drush with the common PHP script to run the worker and send sends the process to the background using no no hub. So that's not we do. Okay. Okay, so we have a worker conne connection at this point. We did only we have specify a single worker to the work properly. Uh, so the worker did connect and we have a request message. 
we get an, an item from the queue using claim item, which is a uh, functionality that we have from developer code by default. We verify that we have an item and create a new ID for that item. Log. Um, we have to serialize the object, uh, the object. Um, the info I'm going to send to the client. So we get the info from the client. We have to serialize the message. Um, we have the queue action, and then we only have to, from the queue name, we get the worker instance. Then we pass the item to the worker, which is the same as, this is how the queue process happens by default on the Drupal core. So you don't have to modify your worker. You don't have to modify your queue. So only, the only issue you could have is the queue is expecting to process items one by, by one. It should work with most queue implementation you could have on your site. So the queue process is simple. We only get a do a HTTP request to the endpoint and we get the data and we verify if we have that item. If we do, then we will load the item from the, from the node storage. If not, we create a new entity, we update the data and save the node. So, So that is mostly what they had about code. Um, and if you have any question about this or want me to go over some line or something. So this is fantastic. And I could have really used this about a month ago on a project, but um, I noticed that the concurrent queue module, that's just for D7, is that right? Yeah, yeah, there is a module on the community and the current module did not work for a scenario because we had a Drupal like implementation. Uh, also, we did want something that we knew that is going to work on the hosting environment, which is Akia. Mm -hmm. I did, I had some experience with this library. I did use this for another project, not Drupal, but Symfony. And so Drupal 8 has some similarity to Symfony. Indeed, some components are from Symfony. So if it worked properly, we and was it was a easy and quick fix. Uh, the queue that used to take like two hours went from two hours to like five minutes or something. So for the client, that was a lot. Yeah. So are you saying that? Um... Is this basically a custom module then that we're looking at today? It, it is, uh, I created a new model for that. Uh, we did create a custom model for that project but that was a specific world project. I imported this over to be more generic. So any, any project can benefit from this. Um, we, call, we can also add some documentation how to get this working or is hosting platform. We know it works on a VPS or also works on easy on Akia. You only have to create an schedule job that will execute this command, which is a root command. And yeah, the reason why, why I didn't create the sandbox yet is because I had to clean up this. I had to, for example, I have some variables that I'm not using. I also have some scenarios like I'm not handling errors on things like that. I have to add some logging, but it is working. Wow, it's amazing. So Simon, do, do you feel that, that there's, I mean, there's there's a space to, to convert this into some kind of contrib model that can be used? Yeah, it on a can be a contrib way? Yeah, it can be a country model. It is going to work with most Q workers that you can have on a site. 
uh, you only have the only thing you have to do to get this working on your project will be to install the module. Uh, then you only have to execute this command on the server. This is concurrent and no, this one not concurrent concurrent queue run. You can run that command from from the at the schedule job. You can add to the on Akia you have a schedule job list. You only have to add that command and it is going to work on that hosting. You don't have to modify your current code. You don't have to modify the queue or you don't have to install new software or compile a new extension or something like that. You only have to execute the command. Okay, that's, that's cool. And, so and is, one of, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. And, and sorry for, for me making so many questions. I'm really <laughs> interested because I had this situation last week. Um, uh, Simon, so React PHP to use it, is it just a library what I need? Is there anything I need to install server side or just include the library? Okay. That is a cool thing about React PHP. It is going to work on a default PHP installation. You don't have to compile PHP or install some multi-threading extension. If you have PHP, it is going to work. Okay, cool. So you can only you only have to install it that using Composer. Okay. So Simo, this is uh, very interesting. Uh, <clears throat> I have a client right now who is using a shell scripting based solution on Acquia to kind of have the same effect. Um, <clears throat> but I, I love that this can be maintained entirely <laughs> in, in Git and in the, uh, the Drupal uh, code base. Um, <clears throat> I, I noticed you were using a separate drush command uh, to execute uh, the queue. Would it be possible to simply um, chain, I guess, do a, I forget the hook or the, the plugin, the vent listener you need to do, but couldn't you just modify the class for a given yeah. queue? And then you just execute the, the default queue run command? But it's also possible, but the queue has to be run from the command line to be able to execute the shell exec, not from a request from the server. Oh, shell exec only works from the command line? Yeah, well, mm -hmm. it works. It is possible to get that working from Apache, but you will have some zombie some process on Apache. So you don't want to use the fourth band from job that Drupal has. You have to execute the Chrome job, or it is possible to get this working from the Chrome job, but the Chrome job has to be invoked from the command line, and the the Akia scale job works. You don't have to you don't have to go manually to Akia and execute the command. You can add the the line to the schedule job. And and so a scheduled job uh, obviously happens on a schedule. Um, is there a, a daemon daem mode or, or some way to run this persistently uh, without requiring a scheduled job? It is possible. Uh, yeah, it is possible to get it working as a daemon. You will have to invoke the process in, from the server. Um, it is the way it is working on the Symfony project we had. So you only have to start the command. And you only have to, on this line, on the run, you don't have to, on the, you have to remove the shutdown and you have to get the loop going. And it is working this way, but we can modify that to run as a diamond. Yeah, it is possible. We could add the option to the model. Well, yeah, I think I think probably for a lot of use cases, if you're looking at a need to have concurrent workers, you're probably also looking at a need to, to have it running kind of forever. <laughs> um, so that, that'd be a, a cool option to have. Yeah. I wrote in 
we wrote that like this way to get the command to be compatible with the current command to work like a dropping replacement. But yeah, we could we could extend this class and create a new command class to provide a diamond. Well, Diego, it's time for me to have too many questions. Um, <laughs> so you mentioned uh, different hosting providers, uh, obviously ones where you control the server a little more, you've got more access, you can kind of do a little more. Um, have you explored using this on a more restricted platform like Pantheon? And this, not really. I know that you can, you can do something like this on Pantheon, but the way Pantheon behaves is not the same. You can execute PS, arbitrary PHP code on, Pan, on Pantheon using terminals, but you will have to invoke that manually. It's not like Akia that you can add the, the schedule job. You have to communicate with Pantheon, and it is possible that, Pan, that Pantheon kills the process. So I mean, you Sorry, you will boot a terminus command running somewhere else to involve yeah, that. Is possible. Okay. That is possible. For example, to get this working on Pantheon, you could create a server in, a server instance using terminus. Then using set terminus, you will create the client instance. So you will call terminus five times, one for the server, for four for the client, and the script will run on their platform and it is possible to get this working on Pantheon, but it's not uh, as easy on another hosting provider like having your own server or Akia. But it is possible. Thank you. I'm, I love Pantheon, but I'm always frustrated by the lack of flexibility when it comes to cron jobs and running commands. It, and there is some. Terminal has some features that they don't have on the documentation. For example, you, they have a documentation on the course command, uh, course CLI command, but you have to keep working on that command to get it working properly. Then you can connect to the server, include a rest script, and I did use that many times to debug something on production or test something on an environment like it is going to work on Pantheon, like, you know. We have an issue with image conversion. So I had to connect and verify some things. Okay, so that is for the code. I will continue and talk about the alternatives. And I did use this one because we did need that work we is it is not e it is possible but not easy to get extension on Akia. So we did need a pure PHP implementation. But for example, on the upcoming release for PHP, which is five and eight dot one, we have an open request for comment and that was approved about fibers that allows to implement four routines on on PHP. So you can create a code routine. Um, this will work like you could, you could create like four core routines that process queue items on the same process. So you don't need the real PHP for the inter-process communication. You also have parallel that, um, that is working on the current version, but you have to compile PHP with the thread safe option. You also have uh, p-threads, but that didn't work properly for me. It's, it is not easy to fork a process and communicate between the four uh, the threads easily. So also in Crossol HTTP, which is the library Drupal use for HTTP requests, allows async. You can execute a sync request on on Gossel, but we will have to modify the the sync process we had to get it working as sync. So 
that is all I had. So I really hope you have more questions. If not, I'm going to say thank you. Yeah. Well, great job, Simon. I, I think that was really interesting. And uh, I, I don't know about anybody else, but I may, it, would it be okay if I reach out to you with questions about this? Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> okay. It, it is easy to implement and looks a bit different because it looks like you have no GS code on PHP, mm -hmm. but it is easy to implement. And, you can have this implementation working in less than a day. Mm -hmm. So we had the requirement for the client. We have the business going and we have, we need a fix for today. So this was the solution, um, it worked. Cool. Also, there is, uh, sometimes some people believe that PHP is slow. PHP is not slow. I believe that PHP is really fast if you work on it properly. And the PHP we have nowadays on PHP 7 is not the same we had on PHP 5. On PHP 5, PHP was designed to die. You had an index PHP file and PHP was designed to enter that file and exit. That doesn't have to be that way anymore. We can have ML loops on PHP. We can have a dime on PHP. So that is what I like about this library. There is also a library that I like that is related that use PHP. The name is PPM, which means PHP Process Manager. So instead of using PHP Fast Process Manager, using Apache or using Nginx, you can have PHP application hosting using only PHP. That seems to be working really fast. Wow. Yeah, it, it seems like this is a really good topic because it, I don't know about anybody else, but it does seem like the number of requests to, uh, you know, get content from outside systems, like just, it, it seems like every week uh, another site wants us to do something like that. And sometimes they're pretty small data sets so we can get away without all of this complexity but um this one i was working on recently it, it was it, it pretty much it was such a huge data set that by the time it was finished it was already out of date so yeah yeah that's it that is a problem we had yeah. by the time the scene did finish the data was not relevant anymore and we have a tour sell uh, sold out so when the client was about to book the tour that it was not to anymore. Yeah. And yeah. Okay, I thought of one more question. <laughs> this, one, <laughs> this, this is probably a hard one. Um, <clears throat> so uh, my client with the, uh, the shell-based kind of concurrent queue processing um, uh, is on Acquia and uh, there's, you know, high availability database. Um, uh, and when Acquia attempted to upgrade the version of the database, uh, you know, they take one of the instances down, they do the failover, upgrade, et cetera. Uh, we ran into some issue where some of the queue items, uh, that there seemed to be a data inconsistency issue between the databases, they didn't sync properly. Um, and the application, of course, assumed that the queue Right, you can use the locking mechanism in the queue to ensure that uh, you're not going to double process any items. And we had a, a sequence of queues. There was kind of the first queue, the second queue, the third queue, the fourth queue that processed mm -hmm. these different tasks for this item. And what we found is the first queue executed once, the second queue executed twice, the third queue executed four times, and the final queue executed eight times. And so customers. Uh, for, for the client received eight emails where they should have received one. <laughs> um, okay. Not, so, not great. <laughs> yeah. so that is the reason I did work on this using a server architecture and clients. So we only have one PHP process uh, interacting with the queue database. 
so we don't have this issue or we also don't have deadlocks on the, on the database. So we restrict the, the queries on the queue table to a single process. So we don't have that issue. And the other, the other solution was to call the queue processor several times and we could have that issue you, you mentioned, but we didn't have this issue only having a single server that gets the, gets the item from the queue and pass those items to the processor. So you only have a single process interacting with the same table at the time. Brilliant. <laughs> that, would, that, would, that would be a good solution. <laughs> I wish that's how it was implemented. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if there's no other questions, I'm going to go ahead and turn recording off, if that's okay. Thank you so much, Simon. <laughs>